Is this uh, the KFM Mornings military band <laughs> doing the official intro for the mayor of uh, the most beautiful city in the world, Cape Town. Officially, good morning, mayor. Good morning, good morning. Nice to be with you. Welcome back to the show for our courtly. Yes. As if you Thank don't you. know the history of this courtly, um, the, the mayor only uh, comes to us in school holidays mm-hmm. because he said when he became mayor, he would not uh, stop doing his uh, most important duty of the day, and that is taking his little girl to school. That's right. That's yeah. right. And now it is school holidays, and so I'm very pleased to be back with you. Okay. Have you uh, showered since uh, you've been in and out of the sewers all week? Uh, I know why you're asking that, but yes, of course I have since then, but I haven't this morning because I had the 4 to 6 a.m. load shedding slot, which is the oh, worst lovely. the worst of all slots for me. I know most uh-huh. people hate the evening slot because mm-hmm. you can't cook dinner, but I hate not being able to have a piping hot shower in the morning. So waking up to cold water is, is, is unpleasant. And then I came here and I must say, I walked into the studio and I've walked into a, a dispute that's happening mm. here this morning. Yes, and, yes. And now Sherlin has been asking me to mediate these corruption allegations. Yes. Uh, a- as yeah. mayor, as yeah. mayor, what is your stance on on corruption, mayor? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not the public protector, but but I will I will leave her her email address for you, Sherlin, afterwards, and you can mm-hmm. report Darren for mm-hmm. for. Uh, not being able to spell uh, or, or for giving rewarding someone who couldn't spell influential. <laughs> yes, you see, there's there's, there's, there's a lot at, in, at play here, you know. But um, so you actually are experiencing load shedding. Yeah. The, yeah they, a, a lot of people think, you know, you mayor of Cape Town, nice, cushy you, position. You keep quiet. This lady yeah. never experiences load shedding. <laughs> Ooh, now, wh- the how? corruption allegations are just flying yes. left, right, and center. So how's Guys, that this possible? This is Cape Town. This is not how we roll here. She she gloats that I mean, even advertised on the advert for the place said load shedding free. <laughs> they don't have inverters. We just like I don't know. How does that work? How are some places not load shedded? Yeah, well, there's very very few places like that, but it's usually because you're next to a hospital. Uh, or in this case, I I think it's it's because you you're very close to the uh, the parliament buildings. That's correct. Yeah. But in my defence, unfortunately, load shedding seems to be back in my building, Darren. Um, you're probably very pleased about that. Mm. Uh, is there a chance that uh, when parliament gets back up and running, that you know load shedding won't be an issue for the people I live with? <laughs> not for you. No, you. You're doing this on behalf of everyone else. Yes, right? yes. That's so thoughtful of you. That's so thoughtful of you. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the unfortunate thing is that it's now nearly two years since that fire and mm-hmm. Parliament, they still haven't started. So I'm oh, afraid wow. it's, it's unlikely to get back and up and running anytime soon. We, we're still hosting the State of the Nation in the, uh, in the City Hall. Mm. Are they, um, do you think that they're purposely doing that because they want to move Parliament to, to Pretoria? No, no, this is great. Uh, someone's going to have to Google this. I can't remember who said this, but you, you know, never, never ascribe to conspiracy what can be better explained by incompetence. Mm-hmm. Oh, that and was that Zuma. Is, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it definitely wasn't. From the kakistocracy. <laughs> wow. Oh, yes, that happened since I was last year. Darren, you went globally viral. I saw that, yeah. You went yeah. globally viral, the kakistocracy. Wow. And yeah. now we can say that word with, with abandon. We can yes. say that. Absolutely, yeah. Kakistocracy. <laughs> You're not swearing it's an actual it's, word. No, it's a yeah, political it's a term. Word of Greek origin. And, and Darren educated. You should ask someone on, on the line to spell that. Yeah. That'll, that'll be interesting. <laughs> but maybe tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And uh, the corruption, you don't have to spell the word anywhere near correctly. Yeah. So, so so no, I don't uh, I don't ascribe to to conspiracy what can better be explained by incompetence. I think they're just uh, they're just taking a long time to get their act together to rebuild Parliament, and that's quite sad to be honest because mm. it's a beautiful yeah. building, yeah. should be fixed and preserved. Well, um, this th- th- there's a question that's that's come in, and uh, is this got anything to do with it? About the and I see a lot of news stories flying around about this, and I just I don't know how you would combat this hopefully you can tell us good morning question to our mayor and uh, firstly want to say congratulations doing a great job the construction mafia is there any control or any plans to stop these people in their tracks 
it's influencing a lot of people's lives and it's influencing a lot of people's jobs. So I'd like to know what's going on there. Mm, to Great question and, and something that uh, does concern us a lot in the, in the city at the moment because there's a huge number of construction sites around the city that are uh, sadly threatened and some have even uh, stopped because of this. Uh, we are working closely with the police here in the Western Cape. In fact, I met them on, I think it was on Thursday or Friday, I met the police commissioner and uh, to discuss exactly this issue. And the, the commissioner has put together a... a kind of special task force, a task team to work on extortion and construction mafia. The city of Cape Town's uh, Metro Police are part of that uh, task team. And so we are trying to intercept uh, these, the people who are really behind what's going on at the construction sites. We know that the person who rocks up at the construction site is really just the muscle, mm -hmm. uh, is not the, the kingpin, not the person or the people organizing all of this and so we have to go after those uh, those those big fish so to speak so there is some some work going on behind the scenes and uh you know our request to the police is they've got the legal powers that we do not have things like intercepting phone calls and emails following money uh looking at bank accounts and so on and and that is what is really needed to track down who's who's actually responsible for this because this is not even a uniquely Cape Town thing. This is a South African thing. It's all over the country. I mean, if you look at places like Richards Bay and, and KZN, it's it's very, very bad. So we want, to, we want to try and stop it or slow it down before it gets anywhere nearly as, uh, as severe as that. And at the moment, I think it is affecting seven of our construction sites around the city. Yeah. And I've heard even from some private uh, builders and mm. private companies who are building things that even their their construction sites have have been threatened as well uh, so it is it is a major issue and it is one that we have to you know think about focus on budget for and and keep working on so that we can disrupt these these organized crime lines so what is it basically um, a, a tender goes out a building is 100 million to build this bridge mm. these guys get the tender they go they start building and then a guy comes and says this thing stops now i want 30 percent yeah exactly for doing nothing otherwise this doesn't go ahead exactly right you've got it mm. yeah that's that sounds eerily uh, accurate actually <laughs> <laughs> and then the builder goes well that's my margin so mm. why am i doing this yeah, but also the you know the builder refuses to lay charges with the police, which is a huge problem because they they're Escaped. afraid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you know the police will say, well, we only have X numbers, twenty uh, open cases, mm. whereas we know that the number is actually much higher than that. But but the cases are not being reported out of out of fear. So uh, you know then you've got to look at things like like site security you've got to spend a huge amount extra on on securing these sites in just one of our sites where we are building homes in uh, in mitchell's plain we've had to beef up security to the tune of 15 million rand at that one site uh, with armed security 24 hours a day dog security all of that uh, kind of thing that we've got to now put there and that is money that could have been spent on homes uh, mm -hmm. or on on the you know on that project itself or on other projects as as the case may be but now has to be spent on securing that site mm. yeah it's sure it's a sad state of affairs mm. it is uh, i think we will you know we will get on top of it once once we get the the key thing is crime intelligence uh, I, I you know i made this point to the police commissioner we this is not about what actually happens at the site just in the same in the same way that uh, if you want to fight uh, drug you know the drug trade or if you want to fight rhino poaching you can focus on the guys on the street actually doing the dirty work but that is not where the decisions are being made mm -hmm. you've yeah. got to use your crime intelligence powers to go yeah. for uh, the the people who are behind this mm -hmm. and actually organizing it once you do that and you start to get high profile arrests and start to put some people away then i do think that we can get a handle on it mm. sure. um okay so look a lot of the questions i'll, I'll take like the, the the sort of the ones that are coming through the most yeah they are little ones which we can forward to your office 
Um, but uh, the homeless issue mm. and the castle. <laughs> yes. um, so there's, it's not just the castle. Obviously, yeah. there's, there's other areas. But uh, where are we with that? I know the last time we spoke, you were trying to build a safe house. Yes. So uh, that's, that's been approved now. So that's that's nice to hear. Uh, we're in the appeals phase and we're hoping that there's no appeals here from the good mm. residents of Greenpoints and surrounds. Mm. And so that we can get on and, and go and do that. And how are the residents taking it? No, actually overwhelmingly supportive okay. uh, in the first phase. But, yeah. uh, you know, let's see now. Uh, I don't want to preempt if there's any appeals, mm. but, but, you know, so far so good. Mm-hmm. And, and what is the what is the, the, the law there? So somebody's living in a tent for whatever reason. You say, listen, I want you to come to yes. the safe house. And they say, no, I'm quite comfortable in my tent. Yeah, this is absolutely crucial. The, so what we will do is we will visit them a couple of times uh, with our social workers, our social development team. We offer them all of our care interventions. We offer them a place at the safe space, uh, help to get onto one of our job placement programs. Uh, we offer them if they have some addiction issue, we offer them referral to addiction care, medical attention, whatever the case is. Help to get an ID book. Uh, we, there's a whole range of things that we offer them. If they say no repeatedly, we will go back and go, go back. Uh, then we have to rely on the courts. And that is the process that we are in now, where we have to go to court and you've got to make an application for each person. You don't just go and you say all the homeless people living in this area. You say mm. for this person, ID number mm. X. Uh, we we have we, you show the evidence that you've been to visit them several times to offer all of this care, and then you ask the court for an eviction order. And before you you even make that application, you've got to be able to show the court that you can accommodate them somewhere, which is why we're building the safe spaces. And that's a quarter of a billion rand that that is costing us in the mm. city to build all of these safe spaces. So it's significant public cost. And, uh, and unfortunately, that process takes time, particularly if it is opposed. So you have a couple mm. of uh, you know, very vocal NGOs in Cape Town who are opposing all of our eviction applications. And that's the case with this one here in the CBD and surrounds as well. And that means that you know, they came in on the 11th hour, uh, the night before the, the court date, they, they filed papers to oppose. And that means it was kicked out until October. Uh, for for postponement uh, so that is that is what we are going through the process but it is a slow process but mm. I am very confident that in the end we will get the, the the right outcome because we have gone through every single right and caring thing to do we have done we have been to all of those people several times we have offered them all of the care and support that we possibly can we are building the alternative accommodation it is excellent accommodation it's dignified it uh, provides uh, food every day medical attention uh, you name it heating all that stuff so I'm confident that we will get there uh, but you know you you have to go through this process on the castle it's slightly different and I know lots of people have written to me about the castle so I'm but you don't own that land don't you it belongs it, the car- castle is a working military base it is uh, it is not just a museum it is an actual military base it belongs to the military mm-hmm. It's run by the Department of Defense and it is owned as all national government properties are by the Department of Public Works. Uh, And so we are in uh, sometimes some pretty heated correspondence with them because I've been writing to the former minister, I've been writing to the president and now to the new minister uh, for going on a year now about the situation at the castle. But and do they like open letters? Do they? <laughs> that's a good question. Like who? Like who actually opens a letter these days? No, that's a really good question because I wrote several times to the previous minister and got n- no response. I then took them all all the letters and I said, right, I'm now got no response from you. I'm writing to the boss. So I wrote to the president. Then I got movement quickly. We we got response. Okay, keen. We're keen to move these people. We're keen to evict them. Uh, can you help us? We went and sent our own social development staff to do uh, the, it, the care interventions with all of the people living there. We said, sure, we will help. We'll do whatever we can. Uh, I would even happily offer them uh, space at the, at the safe space if needed. Uh, we, don't have to, you know, we don't have to rely on public works to come up with alternative accommodation. That'll take even longer. So we ha- we're happy to help, but it's just been, it's, it's, it's been going nowhere. So I did recently send a letter 
uh, threatening to up the ante a little bit and say uh, we might we might be forced to approach the court on behalf of public works the law does actually allow us theoretically to do that but it has never been done in south africa where someone tries to evict someone from someone else's property right uh, that is that's never been done so it would be quite a path breaking uh, case and so that you know that's kind of the point that we are at except for i think on friday i got a letter from the new minister of public works to say he promises that he will get back to me very soon uh, okay. All words to that effect. Basically, this I is like t- South Africa now. Now, yeah, exactly. Well, how long yeah. is now? Now, exactly right. Exactly right. So, I, the I same had, as just now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> almost. Yeah. Uh, so, so now I'm, I'll I'll hold him to that. I, I hope to hear back from him very soon. That's what he said, and uh, you know our our offer of help stands. I heard that. So that that's a that's a national key point, right? Mm. So it's it's owned by the military. That the Cape Town Metro Police. Are not even allowed in that precinct without pre-authorization from the military. Is that true? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, we're not allowed onto onto military land with without uh, without permission from the commanding officer. Mm. So, Mayor, this mm. safe house. When do you think it'll be completed, and how many people will it accommodate? So, remember, this is just the latest and the biggest one. We don't need this one for our application. We've got two in Kulemborg. We've got one in Belleville. We're building another one in Musenberg, Durbanville, Parklands, and then this big one here in Greenpoint. So they're coming all over the place. It's 1,050 beds. Wow. 1,050, 1,500? No, 1,050. And, and as I said, 250 million rand uh, over the next couple of years for expanding these safe spaces. So very significant investment. This one we're hoping to get done by the end of the year. If there's no objections now from the public, then we can start building. And, uh, and and the others, uh, Belleville, we're expanding, Musenberg, we're just finalizing a site with the Musenberg Ratepayers Association and the Musenberg Improvement District. Durbanville, we already uh, uh, done and, and building there. So we, it's all over the place. As always, man, there's a flurry of questions. Uh, I'm sorry, one, I can't answer more of them. But if you if you send me the the important ones or the difficult ones, I'll I'll happily get back to them. We will definitely send them all to you. Um, but a very very common one that is coming through this morning again. So we've dealt with um, the homeless issue. We've dealt with the construction mafia issue, and now this seems to be the next big fish to fry. Okay. I have a question. What is the mayor's uh, take on the new NHI bill oh, being wow. passed? <laughs> NHR, the National Health Insurance. So yeah. the government wants to take it over and do away with medical aids. I've read this bill so many times. I still don't understand it. Well, uh, let me just say before I answer, I'm going to answer fully because the, the gentleman's asked for my view and I have no problem uh, giving it. But the, the city of Cape Town only runs community clinics. We don't actually run a... a very extensive health system. We have about a hundred community clinics around the city. So Grote is national. The provincial, provincial government, yeah. So that's and, Allen's. And Tigerberg and all of the hospitals, uh, all of the state hospitals are all, all run by the provincial government. We run uh, community clinics, uh, 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 you know, in, in communities. And they will continue to run. But now let me answer the question directly. It is a spectacularly terrible, awful idea, which I oppose and which every... Uh, South African, I think, should oppose. And we are in this really weird situation where everyone who uh, is sensible, who has read the bill, who actually understands how it's going to work, is deeply concerned about it uh, ever happening in South Africa. Government seems to, certainly the Department of Health seems to be kind of blindly pushing forward on it, despite all of the concerns that have been raised, despite the fact that the uh, the, the pilot projects across the country were terrible failures, every one of them, not one of them worked. Mm-hmm. And despite the fact that there is actually nothing in the proposal that speaks at all to how it is going to improve health outcomes. The entire proposal is on how, on how to fund health care, but it, it doesn't show how extra funding is going to lead to better outcomes. That's not necessarily true. Dumping a whole lot of extra money that used to go to medical aids into healthcare is not necessarily going to improve outcomes, particularly in the state 
We know, for example, that we spend more on public education than most other countries in the world, and we get the worst outcomes, among the worst outcomes in the world for all of that money. We do not get return on investment. So, no, I'm afraid I have very little confidence in the state's ability to run the NHI, in fact, zero. If we could not, if, if this government could not even get its passports right for Poland, it cannot get the national health insurance right. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm skeptical, I'm afraid, and I think, uh, I think uh, it should be opposed. The one thing that gives me some encouragement is that everyone that I speak to in government, this is the weirdest thing, the weirdest thing, everyone that I speak to says, oh, well, don't worry, it's never going to happen because we can't afford it. So I say, but okay, if, if, you, if you know that you can't afford it and it's not going to happen, why are you going ahead with it? Well, because we must. Is this an election issue? It, it, but it's not year. really. I'm not even sure that it is. I, I don't know if they've, they've actually asked voters if this is, you know, if, if, we were, if, if we had a proper plan to sort out crime and spend a lot more money on crime, South Africans really get behind that. Hmm. But I, I just don't think that it is as much of an issue as, as, uh, as they're making out. I think this is the issue. It is being driven by a small team and literally no more than five or ten absolute ideologues in the National Department of Health who deeply believe in this for philosophical and ideological reasons that are totally disconnected to the actual outcomes in healthcare and in people's lives. Mm. And that is very, very dangerous and sad. Because, you know, there, there's two types of medicine. There's the socialized medicine that you would be aware of in the UK. You get the NHS and in all the European countries you get, you know, so... Mm. Uh, medical is totally free mm. you've got your community doctor you have to go to that guy you can't really choose there's always a long waiting queue there everything's free if you need a procedure if it's not life-threatening you get into a queue mm. all right um, the the downside of that is you get a lot of doctors that get paid by the state they get a they get a wage it's not a the more you work the more you get and then they sit there and you don't know how thorough the care is because the oaks on the clock at five o'clock I'm going home on the other side, <clears throat> excuse me, in America, you've got an entirely private system where um, they say, you know, you spend your whole life to pay for your house. You pay for your house, you get sick, you have to sell your house to pay for your medical bills, mm. you know. So there's two sides. Don't we have both those exactly. in South Africa <laughs> already? Because I, I remember going um, once for a procedure when I was unemployed to the Joburg Gen. Hmm. I had this whole procedure that would have cost about 30,000 Rand. Yeah, there was a queue and I had a wait and it wasn't life threatening, whatever. And um, they said to me, yeah, when I went to the pay the bill at the end, they said, um, are you employed? I said, no. They said, how much can you afford to pay? I said, nothing. They said, all right, an admin fee of 25 Rand. <laughs> and I paid 25 Rand and off I went. You know? But this is exactly the point, Darren. We already have that. The the the. Anyone who needs medical care in, in South Africa can get it. And in different parts of the country, you can get it to varying degrees of quality and excellence. For example, if you go to Kruderskir or Tigerberg or any other major hospital in this province, you will get excellent care. There might be queues, there, there probably will be, but you will get among the very best doctors in the world, you will mm. get uh, facilities that are, that are uh, well managed. That's not the case if you go to Chris Harney, uh, Baragwanath, or, or Joburg Jen, or Charlotte mm. Kleke, I think it's called now, and elsewhere. But the point is, this proposal does nothing to improve the outcomes at those hospitals. All yeah. it does is find a way to take a whole lot of extra money from, from citizens and dump it into the healthcare system. And the key point to make is that there is no guarantee whatsoever that 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 uh, leads to better outcomes as we've seen in education we know it will fail example. we can be blatantly honest with that we know it will fail it will fail but but with devastating consequences yes. as well but this is why it's it's so weird to me like you know that everyone in the anc uh, still tells me and they will never tell you this on the air but they will tell you this almost to a, a, a man and to a woman behind the scenes they will tell you that it was a bad idea for the anc to fund free tertiary education for everyone because the state can't afford it mm. uh, it's now running at i think 48 billion rand a year uh, i might be that that might be a slightly out of date number it might be even more than that now uh, and they'll they'll all tell you that but uh, and yet we, we still press forward with it yeah uh, so this, this is the weird kind of uh, space we're in where uh, we are not guided by 
policy, by data, by evidence of what works. We are guided by ideology, and that's a very dangerous place uh, to be in. Mm. Okay, so also, again, from what everything that I've read from various experts who see the stories, they say it'll never get off the ground. Mm. If it does, we, we're 15 years away from that. Minimum, that's even if it does. And there'll be new presidents, new agendas, new, new what was. If I can, sorry, I'm, I'm grateful to the gentleman for the, asking the question. I just want to say one more thing on this. There is this, there's this thing happening where if you raise questions about NHI in South Africa, you are told that you obviously opposed to better health care for poor people. Mm. Now, for everyone listening, when you when you raise questions about this and and express your concerns about this, you may face that same kind of 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 gaslighting to say, well, no, no, you're not allowed to question these things because then you oppose better health care for poor people. That is mm. nonsense. There is no evidence that this will this will uh, improve health care for poor people. In fact, there's a lot of evidence that it will make it worse. Uh, and and so you have every right to question it and to and to stand up and say i'm i'm very concerned about this and um on another note the um, this has also been flying around um why are we paying drought prices for water this is a question why are we still paying drought prices is, is that a thing is that is that a no. fact no no we we currently on the the lowest price of water because there are no restrictions there's the normal uh, you know, caution to use water wisely in Cape Town, which will always be in place because Cape Town is a is a water scarce place, even if our dams are full right now. Uh, but there are no restrictions currently in place. When there are restrictions in place, we have a stepped tariff that as the instruction, restrictions go from level one to two to three to four, so new prices kick in for each of those levels of restrictions. At the moment, that is not in place. And uh, speaking of cost of things, I bought 300 rands worth of electricity the other day mm. and I got 85 units and I thought it was a mistake. But no, that is actually the price of electricity. Is there a way to protect citizens with regards to the rising yeah. cost of power no. when we have it? Thank you. That is a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is a super question. Very important because uh, it is July now, and so the the increases have just kicked into effect from yes. the first of July, and so a lot of people are noticing that they're getting fewer units. And there was a nineteen percent increase, wasn't it? There was eighteen point six percent increase from ESCOM to the whole country, mm. and remember that the city of Cape Town buys our power from ESCOM. We mm-hmm. pay ESCOM a billion rand a month. Mm. Uh, so, so oh. A billion rand a month is our bill and we do not owe them a single rand. Uh, but we buy our power from ESCOM, so we pay that increase. And so when you are in exactly the same way as, uh, I don't know, pick and pay or something, when your supplier increases prices, you, you you have to, when especially mm. when it's that chunk of a price of a, of a bill, you've got, to, you've got to pass that on. So we... Uh, we managed to increase our electricity by slightly less than ESCOM. So we did 17 and a half, they did 18 and a half. And just to give you an idea, that 1% difference costs about 50 million rand a year sure. for the city because you're talking about 1% of a very large number. Yeah. So you absorbed that cost. We absorbed that cost, but you can't do more than that. It mm. would bankrupt the city yeah. uh, within months. Mm. Uh, so so we are what we call price takers. We take the price from ESCOM. We don't set the price. And that's very important, and this and this comes to to your point, Sibs. That is why it is so important that we find other sources of energy, mm. because power is totally unaffordable mm, in South Africa. Absolutely, and it is getting more and more unaffordable. Mm. And so, w- when you look at the prices that we are getting for solar power now, mm. seventy cents or even less, seventy cents a unit compared to. Uh, at peak times, four rand fifty that we pay mm. ESCOM. Mm. Uh, it, it's a no-brainer. Even if you add the price of batteries to that, which is which makes it much more expensive, you still get to a a place that is competitive or even slightly cheaper than ESCOM. And we know that the price of batteries is coming down drastically. So that is why we are so obsessed with getting new sources of power in Cape Town, so that we can actually, over time, mm. stop load shedding. Of course, that's our first obsession, yeah. but actually get better electricity prices as well for sure uh, mayor two more questions yeah, boy. one here from uh, cornelia she says what's the story about the fleet of bmw standing in brackenfell for over a year 
Okay, again, that was the that is the provincial government. That's my friend and, and colleague Ricardo McKenzie, who's the minister for uh, mobility in the Western Cape government. They bought a whole lot of new uh, traffic vehicles for provincial traffic. Remember, the city of Cape Town's got a big traffic services. We've got uh, many hundred, even thousands of, of offices here in the city. The provincial government has its own traffic service that, that you know, sometimes if you drive out to Neisner or drive out to Beaufort West, you'll see them on the N1 mm. and the N2. Those are provincial government. Now, I, I happen to see uh, uh, Ricardo's uh, statement about those. They were bought late last year. I think there was 100. And they have to be fitted with blue lights. They have to be fitted with, with uh, extra batteries and so on to, to manage the sirens. And so that fit out is still happening. So it's absolutely, they will certainly be deployed and used across the province in the months ahead, but they are just getting kitted out with all of the kit that they need. And they're also uh, rolling out a new um, matric dance program where you can hire those vehicles to go to your matric dance. That would be a great service. That'll May be a, a, a revenue generator. One final question from us here um, on a much lighter note. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick one, uh, there's been talks from the UFC, obviously, where Drika still knows to uh, is the number one contender for the belt. So, are we ready in terms of Cape Town hosting an event like that? Absolutely. There's no global sporting event that Cape Town cannot host. We are uh, competing for a number of massive sporting events around the world, which I won't... I won't discuss in detail uh, until we, you know, we either get them or not, as the case may be. Some, some. Is the F1 still on the table? You know, it, it's. It, we thought that we had basically lost it uh, mm -hmm. to Joburg. That was the word that we got on the grapevine, uh, and I was very down about that for a couple of days. Uh, but it seems that there is still some hope there. I won't say a huge amount, but it's very clear to me. Uh, I will say this. Everyone who I speak to at Formula One and the local supporters, uh, who are very influential people, uh, tell me that they would prefer Cape Town. The issue is that there's no there's no ready track in Cape Town, mm. and uh, and Joburg has it ready. But for UFC, for Formula E, which we've already had, for some massive uh, global rugby competitions, netball and much World more, Cups around the corner, netball starting at the end of this month. And much more besides, Cape Town is ready and, and willing Olympics. to host. <laughs> Olympics. <laughs> 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 do, you know, do you know what we need? Athens um, are still paying for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Old Drick has told us that, um, that Dana said he needed a, a venue that had a roof on. He doesn't do any UFC events without a roof because okay. of weather conditions. What is the, the Belleville Velodrome? Is, yes. is, that, is that still going? Yes, it is. Uh, it's getting some upgrades. We've just, we've just put 40, uh, 40 million in the budget to, to uh, upgrade it. And, but I mean, the, the Netball World Cup is happening inside the CTICC and yeah. there's going to be a great fan park outside, which we are building. Uh, it's going to be opening in a couple of weeks time. So everyone who, who can't get into the, uh, are we off air? No, 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 we're oh, on air. That's okay. our batteries. It's just load shedding oh, okay. at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, so everyone who can't get tickets can watch outside at our fan park. Uh, so we've, we've got indoor venues. We've got outdoor venues. Uh, he doesn't need to, to worry. Brilliant. Okay. Maya, it's always a pleasure it speaking to you. It is such a pleasure. Nice to be here, guys. Thank you for having me and thank you to all the listeners. Thank you very much. There you go. That's your mayor, Jordan Hill Lewis. So we'll see you again in a um, couple of months. Next school holidays. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. All Look right. forward to it already. KFM.